Hello, my favorite people. Uh, today is uh, June 29th. Can you believe that? Artist material advisor today is uh, very exciting, like always. But today is special, not only special for uh, us, for George and me, but for all our employees, because that was collective effort. And it's not to say then uh, all other products are not collective efforts because obviously there is a production, there is a packaging, there is a tubing, there is a, you know, a shipping person uh, behind that. But this time, this project took us uh, two years. And um, we were, um, through the history of natural pigments, we were attempted several times to make the historical colors. We did make the cinnabar uh, 15 years ago. Uh, we did make a malachite once. Uh, we made smalt once, and uh, we never will repeat smalt again. So then uh, I, on our classes, we always talk about this beautiful color. So then we still have a, um, a pigment available. And uh, we unless we find out how to do it without uh, <laughs> without it livering. But, yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like always, my name is Tatiana Zaitseva. George, is, uh, George O'Hanlon is behind the camera. He will help me, uh, like always. And so, you know, today will be a little bit different. Uh, we will not have um, our regular movie. So, we will just talk about these five uh, historical colors. And uh, so um, actually, uh, George a little bit interrupt me. And so that we did do um, orpiment, we did make it. Uh, and it was, um, uh, I think it was 12 years ago, first time. And what uh, we did uh, do by hand, we did grind by hand. This time, all our colors we, uh, we um, milled on, the, on our mills. And the problem uh, was, uh, I mean, I know I was excited and <clears throat> I think in um, um, November 2020, I told uh, all our beautiful people then we, we will uh, have a big announcement for Christmas. It didn't happen because uh, what happened at this time, so one color or another misbehave. And so then we hold it all uh, all of all five of them together until all of them will be baked <laughs> enough to um, to show you today is the day and um, so George you want to start some kind of slideshow I think it will be on on the right side yes so five of most important colors of the history and we will just slow uh, go through every each of them uh, on screen and then i will show you one by one so you probably already read the newsletter so it's a uh, pale azurite we specifically saying it's pale azurite it's not azurite what we had from russia we don't have that anymore uh, so this uh, uh, azurite is from uh, china and we will uh, we will talk specifically uh, later about what's the difference how it's look like and um, so our regular um, lazurite we already had the years and years and years but this time we just uh, decided to put that in uh, in the jar we still have in the um, in the tube too so the next one is orpiment uh, historical color very old one very interesting we will touch a history today and so malachite and of course the cinnabar so the pale uh, azurite the most important blue in the renaissance and uh and of course well, george will help me to uh, yeah this is an interesting color this is a, a, a copper carbonate yes mineral mm -hmm. and uh, i'm going to put a mine uh this is an an azurite <laughs> tanya's in the mine now mm -hmm. um so azurite and, and of course malachite is usually associated with yes. it um so the it's at the usually we find these minerals at the top of a, a copper ore vein uh that'll go deep into the earth but um uh, but that's an example of what it looks like here's an example of the actual azurite and you can see malachite and the very 
very uh, bottom right screen. So this is malachite there. Yeah. Okay. And it often forms shapes like this too. Uh, kind of looks like cauliflower uh, in, in the earth. That's one of the, fa one of the typical shapes it's found. Tanya will hold up a, so an example. This we have ore here and you can see here. So this crust here and, uh, and of course, malachite right here. And uh, you can see some so of the they, dark blue there. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what the pigment powder looks like. Yes. Beautiful um, kind of. Because we did have two grades. Screen. One was very bright um, uh, and uh, this one is very pale. And again, it's depend what uh, other minerals associate with that. Yes. Right. There's always impurities because the earth doesn't just produce it in, in, in pure blocks. So it's always mixed. And so trying to find very pure examples of it are very difficult. And that's why it's actually pretty expensive, even though in history it wasn't that expensive. But when we say it's the most important color in the Renaissance is because apparently it wasn't as well used prior to that time. But then it became the number one blue, actually. A lot of people think the other one that we're going to show later is the number one blue during the Renaissance. But in terms of usage... Just because I was looking in uh, information yesterday, so if Lazurite, they are digging already 6,000 mm -hmm. years where the Azurite, the first mines were actually in Israel, 3,000 uh, years. BC, I think BC. BC. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's, it's quite old. Yeah. It's, it's no doubt about yeah. it. It's been around and it's been known for a mm -hmm. long, long time, not only in, in the Western Hemisphere, but also in the Eastern Hemisphere. Yeah. And... So that's how we package. So I will show you our packages a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Just continue. To, mm -hmm. So we say that lazurite is the most precious pigment in history. And in history, um, some time ago, so then it was even um, more expensive than gold. And um, so that every time when um, the painting was ordered, and of course, uh, it was ordered by how much lazurite you use, yes? Is that correct? Yeah, and, and uh, a lot of the uh, painting contracts in the medieval and perhaps early Renaissance, they would specify the weight of the gold and the weight of the lazurite because it was a precious stone. And so here we, oh, we have that lazurite. And uh, so you can see um, a lot of imperfections here too. And so, oh my God, I will be yeah, don't, exercise. Don't, don't, that's <laughs> but of course we have this uh, right. sample. So then, um, and it's, you can see that- It looks more pure, but it actually, yeah. when you polish it, it Yeah, it, it it's has just polishing, yes. So it's hard to find really good examples. And by the way, this is DNA of the lazurite. So that's how, Restorers know where that specific lazurite was. If they restore in some um, some historical paintings, they know exactly where it was digged. If it was digged in in Afghanistan, if or if it was uh, digged in um, in New World in in like in Chile, Chile mm -hmm. and uh, so or we we have several. Uh, actually, lazurite is in in several places in. It's a number in of Earth. places. Uh, Italy, uh, I think you mentioned yeah. it. Colorado, Baikal, yeah. Russia. Baikal, uh, Russia. That's it was, another uh, yeah. source. Mm -hmm. And interesting is what 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 Tanya was saying by DNA. It's that the mineral mixture. Yes. Uh, is peculiar to each of these areas, and that's how they can identify because some areas will have one type of mineral and another. And of course, here, fool's gold, that is the most uh, probably known, yes, the mineral together with the lazurite. Yes, yes. So that's an example, pyrites. Yeah. yeah. And what you're looking at on the, on the right side of the screen there is uh, the Koksha Valley. This is, this is uh, uh, and you can actually see the stream of lazurite. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the mountain, and apparently that's that's where it it was crusted, and then of course uh, through where uh, it's it's descended on this this uh, alluvial uh, uh, outcropping there. But uh, Koksha Valley has been in an exist. It's been mined for at least the past six, perhaps more thousand years, and so it's a it's and it's still a very important source, still yielding lots and lots, and the best lazurite in the world. 
There are some good examples of stones here. These are these are rather good, and they, and they and the quality of the stone will determine the how deep blue it really is. So that's an important factor in there. So that's and of why course lapis lazuli that means all together the blue stone, right? And lazurite itself, it's the blue mineral, right? So that's why we um, we in our uh, like when we sell the pigments, of course we call lazurite. Uh, because it's um, quite pure, although still imperfections there. So and we're keeping that way because otherwise it will be too expensive to clean and it will be not that much in interest uh, than because it will look like uh, ultramarine. And uh, if, if you're interested later, I will show you what's the difference between uh, ultramarine and uh, lapis lazuli, the, the difference even in pigment. All right. And you can see the, the most common uh, accessory minerals or impurities in the lapis lazuli stone. You can see the white areas uh, usually are uh, calcite or chalk mm -hmm. and the gold areas, uh, which That's... look like little flecks of stars when you see it under a microscope especially, is that pyrites that Tanya showed there yes. earlier. And and it's, so it's, it's uh, to get pure, like what uh, Cianino Cianini describes in his manual, the purity, the yield is less than 5%. Yes. So you can imagine starting off with a stone and then you, and you get what you end up with very, very bright blue, less than 5%. That's why the cost was so much. And here's an example of the pigment. So it's a more, it, of course, this is, this is what ultramarine, the synthetic, uh, is based on the same chemistry. And so now we have a synthetic and that's why uh, ultramarine, or when we say it was the most precious stone, and uh, later when ultramarine, the synthetic mineral, was was introduced, it became the most common common yes pigment because it was used in laundry bluing. And there's our product in a jar. Malachite is the oldest green pigment in history. And um, I will show you now, although here's in green screen, it's completely disappearing. <laughs> uh, I guess well, we will show, show you a little bit later. Yeah, yes. later so yeah. uh, we have that one too. So here. <laughs> so yes, and um, it's uh, it's interesting when they started, they all together come in this uh, azurite, malachite, chrysocolla. And uh, so the altogether stone called uh, King Solomon uh, stone, and it was one of the most precious one in the history before, uh, of course. It was believed get, to be in yeah. King Solomon's mine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course, we don't know the exact location of that. <laughs> and of course, you can see here azurite and malachite, the veins. And so it's beautiful, yeah, beautiful. And both copper carbonate minerals. So that's why they're they're seen together, cousins. There's a good example. Yes. There's that cauliflower looking mm -hmm. example of stone, very beautiful. That's very typical formation, by the way. And there's what the pigment looks like. So by the way, the pigments we sell all, uh, we started um, through Iconophile first, but then we, uh, of course, natural pigments opened 2003. And since that time, we uh, we sell all these uh, pigments. It's, it was available. And actually, we started with these pigments, the yeah. most uh, expensive pigments. We, yeah. Yes. From, yeah, yeah. They're most beautiful. They have very interesting qualities. I'm saying all five. We yeah. Actually, we brought yeah, from we Russia did. that, yeah. that yeah. time. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, and let's then, continue. Yeah. And, and again, Malachite, the oldest, oldest green uh, or, or probably... One of the oldest green pigments known to humans. We, they see it in prehistoric paintings. It was used as a uh, makeup. Dangerous one. But uh, so then they know then azurite and uh, lazurite and malachite. Of course, azurite and uh, malachite were quite dangerous for. Um, but what to say? You know, women, we, women but, were using yeah. lead white as a, as a foundation. So what's, uh, this is not as bad. <laughs> okay or pigment that is bad <laughs> so that's the toxic pigment called gold paint and uh, this is arsenic sulfate and uh, it's god bless then it's not arsenic sulfate 
but <laughs> you mean or acetate so, actually yeah acetate yeah. yes <laughs> which is actually another green it was actually a green color okay so, so. Uh, yeah let's do not touch this one yet today so um and uh and we will talk about all percussions what you can do uh, a little bit later sure. so this is yes yeah, this is the mine of the this is orpiment a, yeah orpiment mine in in nevada uh, nevada united states this is what orpiment looks like i don't have that stone yeah to show <laughs> <laughs> that's what the pigment looks like and there it is beautiful color beautiful and and um and we grounded by the way with glass oh you told oh, did my I, did I story give that away? yes oh, i'm sorry you... okay jesus <laughs> that was my secret oh okay 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 um cats out of the bag uh, uh, and yes. we'll explain why that is that's why i wanted yeah. when we we'll, will we'll show but anyway that. yes um cinnabar yes and of course that was the most important red color uh although it's of course uh, uh, cinnabar is natural color and where the vermilion is uh i always say then this is synthetic brother of the <laughs> of the cinnabar so chemically they are same yeah. the difference is the vermilion is pure synthetic substance where the uh, cinnabar is natural and uh, although naturally cinnabar doesn't have many other ingredients but just because how it's ground and uh, so it's um, uh, it the variation could be from very scarlet red to very orangey color so then so this is beautiful we uh we are very happy and proud <clears throat> then uh while the the time when we didn't have a vermilion so we found source of the cinnabar and uh so but now looks like we again found uh, not found but this uh the, the uh, vermilion but we were buying years and years and years from one place in the world it's in china and um so we just heard the news yesterday george uh, george gave the news to uh, to company then they are back to production and we probably will have um vermilion at some point uh in our office and so we'll see uh how expensive that will be <laughs> so cinnabar actually uh not as bad right now so it's uh i mean it it started as the same price but uh but vermilion now it's a little bit more expensive but we'll see yeah so and here's um um of course uh, cinnabar is the most common form of mercury found uh, there are other forms of, of mercury but this is red so uh, uh mercuric sulfide and this is a mine you're seeing a, a mine in uh, slovenia which was an important mercury mine until i think about the 19th century and and of course the the biggest one in 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 uh, in the western hemisphere was in almaden spain and it was active until very uh, very recently uh, in, in the last century and looks like george and i we will go we're this, going to visit uh, it yes visit and we're going to bring back videos and pictures of yes. it so people can see because we're trying to document locations maybe we will dig something too. yeah maybe. <laughs> uh of course china has uh very huge sources of uh of mercury today and that's um that's an example of the cinnabar beautiful stone and beautiful color mm -hmm beautiful color and that's that's the color in kind of an a slight orangey red but it, mm -hmm. it varies and like Tanya mentioned part of particle size so the pigment will vary the the uh, tone of that mm -hmm. or the hue of that color okay so now okay so we Tanya will show some of the other so like I said, it was a uh, collective effort, uh, every of our employee. And uh, so we, we thought then we need to uh, thank everybody uh, working so hard uh, on that project. And so then just to introduce these colors, just simply in the tube, uh, some of them uh, would not even stay in the tube. That's why we, uh, we didn't even attempt uh, on some of them and uh, but what we did of course we put that in the jar 
How about, can we split the screen where uh, we can show? Yes, exactly. So then I will show both. So this is um, Azure, right? And what I wanted to show you, so then um, here would be QR code, code where you can, uh, if you by accident bought that, uh, that color, so then you can read uh, because here's not enough history, but every box we have here, if is that possible mm -hmm. to see? Yeah, so uh, this is the batch number, what made, and here we have so for every color, we have only a um, certain amount, amount of jars we made and every jar is um, numbered. And so for Azurite, we made only 40 of them. And uh, so just reminding people, this is a special, special edition, edition packaging. We will have more. Oops. Uh, we will have more later, uh, but this is we just wanted to introduce this as a special edition here. I don't know if it will take two years every time to make it. No, it just, shouldn't, shouldn't. Just painful. So um, that's how it's look like. And I want to show you how uh, actually the pigment look like. So this is the pigment. And this is how we sell the pigments. It's 10 grams uh, of the pigment. And I do believe it costs $23 uh, alone. So where this one, I do believe it's 72. So uh, we carefully me measured every jar, every um, every pigment. So every every jar will weigh different. And I will specifically talk about, for example, like um, cinnabar is the heaviest pigment on the planet Earth. So therefore, uh, in one jar of cinnabar, you will have 100 grams uh, of the 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 pigment. So. Um, we are selling this uh, right now for $106. It's not cheap. I absolutely understand and this is not for uh, probably like for everybody um, budget. But um, again, so 10 grams of um, uh, cinnabar we sell for $40. And so if you will calculate, like let's say uh, you need to buy 10 jars of um, pigment to make a... a that jar of the 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 cinnabar so it will cost you 360 dollars or, or something like this uh because it's 40 dollars and so and uh, so in this case um azurite is uh, so 72 dollars which is still will be much cheaper than if you will buy um the the pigment and so that's how it's look inside and uh we didn't put any oil on top what we did uh, uh original so for every jar will have um nitrogen blanket so we did put the uh, nitrogen on top of the every uh, jar and close very fast so then it will not uh, skin down so remember that will skin down if skin down is that correct no skin yes. skin okay <laughs> okay it will skin and uh, so in order to prevent obviously you will not use that expensive color uh, at, at one time so in order to uh, for you to uh, to prevent that and that's how we send to you in the, in the bag and so here would be you will find your jar of the uh, color and we send you walnut oil so that small, um, small amount, but enough to when you use it. So you level down your uh, color and then you pour oil on top. So and then you uh, uh, close very tight. So then uh, the, then oxygen will not go through the, the jar. That's why we choose actually the glass and the metal. So then at least it will be uh, much uh, less um, uh, oxygen going through so when you're ready to use next time you open the jar you pour out the oil uh, from top and you use the color again level down again pour oil back and that's how you uh, you will prevent skinning and again skinning probably not the worst thing so because even um, skin if you will not uh, use just once a year so then 
probably would be not as worse like than like completely dried uh, when we have um, like in but open containers yes and option uh, okay I'm <laughs> I'm going far I'm going far <laughs> so uh, now lazurite so this is how lazurite packed and by the way this is sealed but uh don't be attached to uh to so i can change the seals every time so it's just my fun time for that and uh, so again it's signed uh, every each of our uh not e not everybody we didn't have enough uh, of course the uh, space for that but so here's you will see the batch and how many and what jar uh, number of can you can have. you remind them again about what the QR code is for on the bottom QR code so then QR code so when you will uh, scan it and so it will give you access to the article about that specific color and um, uh, George put specific information about like history uh, the swatches then he will uh, he will have I believe even videos on uh, on that how we made it this colors and so and uh, here um, on one side so you can see that was azurite that's the swatches we are making so that's how lazurite looks and so you can see then this is full uh, strength and this is 50-50 uh, with titanium. Usually we do with, of course, lead white, but people are accustomed to see the color with titanium. So that's why uh, we do this specifically for swatches. And so, and now we will talk about ore pigment. So when you will have an ore pigment from us that will come in that kind of uh, packaging and it will have that label then you absolutely understand what you open it because it's arsenic sulfate. So, and it will, um, it does have, don't be scared. It does have a smell, very, very not pleasant. <laughs> so like- It's sulfur. Sulfur, It's yeah. a sulfur smell because that's what it contains. So it's not a dangerous uh, uh, smell, so, but uh, it, it is dangerous to eat. Please don't do that. And uh, so, and another thing what George mentioned already, and so we will talk about this, we, uh, we ground our ore pigment with glass. It was actually historically was done uh, like this. And so we uh, originally, we, pro we didn't exactly understand why was that. And so when we did well, first, we did, but, I yeah, mean, yeah. okay, you do, did okay. So uh, first time we started do uh, or pigment, uh, we uh, we grind by hand without glass, and then then of course George immediately said like, well, okay, so here's uh, here's how it must be done, and he will explain why. So the the uh, the shape of the particle is what we call micaceous, and so it tends to get sticky. Uh, so that so that trying to grind it and separating the particles, they they're like like mica. They they like to make these uh, very thin leaves, and they tend to stick to one another. So in order to separate them, we it was common back in in history to introduce, or at least according to some uh, literature, uh, to introduce uh, small particles of glass, which wouldn't affect the color. And uh, just a small amount of glass would help to separate the, the particles, make it a little bit easier to grind. And so that's what, so we did that in the tradition, probably not entirely necessary in terms of you, when we use modern um, triple roll mills, but we thought it would be uh, very interesting to do the same thing for, for the traditional. Uh, and by the way, all of these colors, there's no additives in there. And that's why we put them we put them in jars because they will separate and in jars at least you can stir back in uh, the oil back into the, the paste so the smallest amount of the color was uh, I mean the jars was made with um, uh, or pigment <clears throat> although okay here's another secret I will tell you today so um, we will have a, a jar of um, tubes afterwards because nevertheless this color actually be did behave quite well and um, and separation happened but again uh, all our customers who long time with us they absolutely understand then 
then um, separation in our colors is possible. And, um, and, and again, we remind everybody, this is, this is an arsenic trisulfide pigment. Yes. So uh, please handle carefully. We don't, we, don't want a, we don't want, in general, people buying this who don't have good hygiene practices in their studio because it, it, is, it, is, a, it is a toxin. So, but why do we do it? Because the, the pigment is very interesting and, um, and people should be uh, uh, able to handle things uh, properly. If you're, you know, if you're an adult and you can read, <laughs> so yes. you can read the instructions on how to handle it. Yes. And um, so since we did sell uh, Orpiment um, a long time ago, and uh, it appeared on our website by accident last week when we were ready to uh, to already to announce the colors, and so um, all that um, danger information was there. But now we're specifically having this program to tell you: please be careful. Don't uh, uh, obviously if you have a children or uh, uh, people who can't read. So please, um, please keep this uh, this far from uh, from this kind of people and uh, so here we will go to molokite and so by the way did you notice all that beautiful design that's george did all of that and uh, we didn't give you space here on uh, on our <laughs> so okay i am now telling our uh, artist and you're the one who did this so um, so and again, uh, history and here's uh, how many we made it. And uh, so and I will show finally I will show you our malachite. Oops, like this. Yes. So you see on one screen it's natural pigments on <laughs> on the uh, on the stone and here beautiful malachite. Yeah. And so and here I I want I want to show how. This is azurite. That's how azurite looks like. And, okay. So, malachite looks like this. And what I notice when I open specifically for this, and you can see the darkness, and this is just oil reacting to, uh, to the, um, to the air. And so, if you don't like that, it will not be visible at all when you will mix it. But if you don't like, so you can just tap it uh, on top and so and just uh, pour another oil. And so and um, so this um, it forms a brownish then, color yeah. and with the oil that separates. And, and that's, um, that's so typical. this is how mm -hmm. uh, pigment looks like. Mm -hmm. And remember, yes, and the azurite and malachite, both of them will go uh, yellowish. And uh, so azurite will go greenish and uh, malachite will go yellowish uh, uh, tint. So then, so just remember about that. And now, of course, is time for our cinnabar. And uh, so um, with cinnabar, we didn't make any tubes. So then this only what will be available, only 43, um, 43 jars we made it. And for now, but we, for now. we may decide to do more. <laughs> okay, we'll see how that <laughs> we'll, we'll figure figure out how so, to do that. So, and like I said, this is the <clears throat> heaviest jar. So, uh, Orpiment is the lightest one. And um, so again, we uh, we did the price. We made the prices accordingly how much pigment we use for every each of them. And so then, and that's. <clears throat> that's how cinnabar looks like and this one i already opened don't think then uh, we will send you half of the jar <laughs> so um anyway um the cinnabar does dry um medium time and so that's how pigment what's the slowest drying of that slowest dry one second so yeah. i will mm -hmm. show right now okay. this is the uh cinnabar pigment and like I said, this is the 10 grams of cinnabar is $40. So you really, really have a bargain here. And so the slowest one is orpiment. Mm -hmm. It will dry forever. I mean, a couple of weeks. So you have this time. Uh, and uh, it will give that smell uh, to your room. So um, be prepared. And so just it goes away. 
It, it is, yeah, it obviously, uh, yes, yeah, like obviously. You can't smell the, those paint ships there. Obviously, anymore, yeah. yes. And yeah. so, and um, so, uh, what but else? It's a, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a very interesting color. And, and the color was used in, uh, by, by the artists in the Italian Renaissance, Titian, Tintoretto, they use that color quite, quite heavily. Uh, and not so much in Northern Europe, but yeah. And of course, uh, first time I found about Orpiment when, when we were uh, translating article uh, uh, for Iconophile about frescoes in the uh, 8th uh, eight to 15th century. And Orpiment wa was one of the most important colors for the uh, skin tones, uh, although it, you know, usually it was using, of course, yellow ochres, but orpiment is giving this unbelievable glow and um, um, so that time first 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 time i read about uh, this uh, pigment and um, it just we we absolutely needed to have that so <laughs> so here we are and uh, like i said so both of this uh, um, colors come in with warning label so then then you will not have any mistake uh, by opening and so and uh, hopefully right people will buy so I, I don't want returns <laughs> that. it's quite quite expensive and so um, so if uh, if we have uh, questions I I would answer and um, do we no questions oh wow okay <laughs> Do people even oh, hear okay, us? Oh, okay, here. Is there... Uh, oh, a good question, Becky. Um, I, I, I like that question. Is there any pigment that I should avoid mixing with orpiment? That is a great um, uh, question. So, um, and, and basically, um, uh, there is in a number of manuals talking about not mixing orpiment with some colors like lead. Uh, however, the interesting part about it, uh, we do see orpiment mixed with lead in old paintings and we don't see the problem that they mentioned uh, that is darkening. Uh, this may be due to a, uh, some of this observed darkening may actually be due to the synthetic variety because there is a synthetic variety of orpiment called, called King's Yellow. So, uh, so that warning may be against the uh, the synthetic version of orpiment, King's Yellow, and not the actual natural mineral. And these are all natural minerals, so they're all found in the earth like this. So, um, uh, so I, I, uh, we're gonna be testing this, by the way. Uh, we're gonna be testing out, uh, so we, we've started testing some of this, but we haven't uh, had any conclusive results from that yet. But we'll, we'll keep you informed about that. Another question, after orpiment cures, does it retain some of the sulfur scent? I find it interesting that some pigments have odd odors. So that would be very pigment uh, has the odor. And um, I can tell you this, this swatch I was, uh, I made a um, um, long time ago. And of course, now it doesn't smell. But it, uh, our lab was smelling probably couple couple months after that, and again, uh, but again, I, a, I worked we have a large amount. Yes, of, yes, of exactly, pigment there exactly. And exactly. Paint so, drying, yeah. so um, none of other uh, these uh, five colors have uh, any odors except, of course, the the um, linseed oil. Uh, all of them, by the way, uh, were ground in linseed oil and. Uh, but um, again, if if it's if it is offensive, so then you probably should think about. Um, um, because I I needed to mention this. It's yeah. it's very strong uh, smell, and um, no, so, um, Pam is asking how strong the smell is. The smell of a skunk or just rotting vegetables. Uh, it's neither smell like that. It's, uh, it's not that strong. It's, um, it's actually the same smell. Again, see again. See. Two people <laughs> living together for twenty some years, and we have different idea about this. For me, it did smell like um, maybe not like rotten um, rotten egg, 
maybe not a exactly yes. Yes. um it's very strange smell you understand and that something is present but uh see george didn't even notice i, I mean I i'm sure he did I notice noticed. but he he was I not like, like you it, know because so. it smells like sulfur yes and actually by the way ultramarine blue has the same very same similar smell for man for me, it's different. For me, ultramarine smell like dirty socks of man. <laughs> so, oh, <I'm> that's specific. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I'm joking. So, no, uh, it's two different things, of course. The ultramarine is, yeah, sulfur, but it's not uh, not as... Uh, and again, don't be scared. It's, um, it, it's not like you are smelling and it's like okay I'm, it's not going to be like evolving. a skunk yeah, yeah. no it's no, not going to be that no. powerful at all. but the right. thing is it's so interesting you will find that this color behaves so different than uh, every uh, all other colors and of course like for example uh, azurite and malachite they're long colors they um, you know you you vi you saw the video on our newsletter how it was just you know um uh, pouring and it was long string where the uh, or pigment it was like you know it's that it's very short and and uh, i can't call that battery absolutely not because of the the uh heaviness of uh, uh the glass and the the fluffiness of the or pigment or pigment is very fluffy pigment and so um it's kind of like um bouncing in between two pigments and so but yeah it's uh very different and uh, and of course the uh, cinnabar is very heavy and so then you probably will need a little bit more oil or uh, or medium whatever you, you use and so just to to make this flowable david uh, asks uh, is the darkening when some pigments interact the reason why painters experimented with different reasons and me resins and mediums Yes, on some of them, like what we had, the green uh, pigment. And but so it's not it's, why uh, they experimented with resins. I think they already knew, yes, like what you were saying about um, uh, Vermeer was using. Yes. Yeah, but I, again, they. Uh, I think some of the... So, for instance, we do find orpiment, as an example, in, in like I mentioned, uh, nor, especially Northern Italian paintings in the Renaissance, uh, first part of the Renaissance, and it was very prevalent there. We don't see the darkening there, um, but um, uh, at least uh, at least from from information I've gathered from uh, conservators in regards to that. But uh, the reason they used mediums came much later, actually. Um, uh, so, and and actually, if you go to painting best practices, um, the paintingbestpractices.com, I have a whole uh, lecture there on uh, why artists, it's called Changes in Binding Medium and why artists started using resins, resins. in their paint. Yeah. So uh, there is, of course, one example of, of resinous uh, color, and that's, of course, verdigris, which was, uh, and, and, and the main reason for that was to develop its color, not, not because it darkened, although it did darken. <laughs> so, it's brown. It, so. it, it tended to and, brown. And um, yeah. thank you very much for love. <laughs> we need it <laughs> oh um so uh pam pam says that's, that doesn't sound too bad that the smell and then she asks if she could see the swatches let's uh yes uh, yes we can put absolutely that, so put that back up um, on there. yes so that's um and if you want you can put a whole screen george if if it's possible so then we can see all five of them together yeah. if it's mm -hmm. possible so yeah. then um then i can yes Okay, so I can move a little bit this way. Oh, then I see my table. Okay, okay, so that's the swatches, and uh, that's why remember we were talking about pale. It's a little. It looks a little bit greenish, uh, possibly, but it's it's kind of a steel gray blue. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a, it's a grayish blue. And um, and again, I can uh, just open the you jar. Can, yeah, probably. And yeah, that's see. Yeah, a, ten, it looks a little bit greenish in, in the yeah. uh, uh, and the in, screen in, in the screen here. At least um, from from my my. For me, point. it's look almost uh, almost correct color except the um, vermilion. Vermilion looks very very uh, bright, where it's not. It's kind of 
it's pretty bright it's just yeah uh, i'm saying then here in my screen i see then it's uh it's almost like my nails they are the same but it's definitely not so you know, it's where yeah. the yeah it's a little so, bit more subdued than yes. let's say a cadmium red yes. light yes that's that's you know. but the, the the advantage of it is that it it does some beautiful uh tones that tend to look pinkish which you can't get with a cadmium red light yeah and i guess becky already got our uh, orpiment uh, she can say if she <laughs> If I don't think she's opened it yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> smart, smart, smart. So <laughs> she's yeah. waiting until we yes, talk good, about good, it. Yes, good, good, good. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and and again, folks, we 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 put on warning labels. We just want everybody to take precautions, and uh, just all you need to do is just avoid getting it, ingesting it, and w just wash your hands carefully. Uh, you know, after, after, you know, if you've had any contact with the paint itself. And of course, just reminder, if you are painting on uh, these historical colors, quite this is expensive. A, this is a plug for artifacts panels. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So we, uh, so we, yes, I, I needed to say that because uh, we do have so many people uh, calling us and asking you know, every time question and I uh, keep forgetting about uh, talking here. So then, because uh, we do have uh, 20 some uh, surfaces. Uh, I, I, Anton, of course, will kill me. Then I don't know exactly how many, but it, uh, it's, I, last time I remember it was 22 surfaces. And so, um so uh, i think they have every n now in on they have uh advert uh, the promotions uh so th starting this month they have special deals on artifacts uh, that be is so uh i i so shame you can, you can, but you i can don't get these panels on yes. natural pigments just in the standard sizes but yes. if you need custom sizes I, I even up to i think almost four by eight feet yes he's um, doing that i'm not too. quite that size but pretty close and um, uh, and he has um gallery wraps. gallery wraps. yes so, so yes so it's actually looks like a canvas but it's all rigid yeah. uh looks like a gallery wrap canvas but it's all rigid and of course, for people who don't paint uh, oils, but um, uh, egg tempera or watercolors, we do have all these pigments except this right now. We don't have lazurite, so we do have all these pigments available. And, we will um, have lazurite, though. We will. Yeah, gonna... We will grind this stone. Where, so. We are grinding, yeah. So, any more questions? One a question here. Uh -huh. um, how does King Yellow Synthetic compare with the natural orpiment when used in paint? It's, um, uh, I, I, we, we had some examples of King's Yellow. Um, it, it, it looks, looks pretty similar, I would say. Um, there is, uh, they recently found a new synthetic uh, orpiment in uh, Rembrandt's, one of Rembrandt's paints, very interesting, but it's in glass. So what they did, which was apparently something that they did quite a bit, uh, especially in, uh, in the Italian Renaissance. And we talked about that in the last, um, uh, in, our, in actually our last uh, um, AMA. AMA, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so that... Um, uh, we have a swatch. Uh, of King's Yellow on watercolors from 18th century, yes? Uh, 19th 19, century. It's 19, actually a Windsor century. Newton paint. There was, what, uh, we, uh, I don't even remember the date. What it was, was it's a 19th century Windsor Newton paint. Uh, it was donated to us uh, by, some, uh, by some friends, and uh, we thank them very much for that. Very interesting. So it does look yeah. Look very similar. To I remember Orpiment. something. We yeah. need to find that. Uh, yeah. Just to, to but they did it. make King's Yellow uh, watercolor cakes. Uh, we're not tempted to do that. <laughs> no, not in watercolor. <laughs> or orpiment. No. We're not going to introduce that as a watercolor paint. No. So, we did uh, attempt. Uh, we did uh, uh, vermilion in watercolors. Yeah, yeah. Which and is... uh, and again, I'm I'm almost thinking that maybe it was mistake introduced the uh, watercolor malachite because. God damn it, like last week I had a customer and she was saying that she's professional artist, but she 
she didn't see the color at all. And I was like, this is the Molokite. Well, well nothing we can do with that. And part of the reason is because... And, you, um, part of the reason is because the color has to be... It's... Uh, you, you can't... You know, you can't... Um, um, you can't grind it to a very fine particle size malachite no, because it loses it its be. color. Azurite malachite in particular, and that's why they're very coarse pigments, and and, you, and you'll probably even see that in the oil paint. They're they're quite coarse, and they have to be. That's and that's historically how they've always. Of course, been. in our classes, I'm showing big particles and small particles, and you can see how the color is developing or mm. Obviously, losing, losing when you grind as it gets the, smaller, the, yeah, yeah, and, and you can see that in other colors like smalt, and yeah. we have two types of smalt, yes, like that. So, yeah, all right. Um, so, any other questions um, uh, we'd like to take on? So, um, while we're looking for questions, I just, uh, I just uh, have a, a small announcement to do and we to have make a, it. One more question, I will, I will, oh, okay. I, I will entertain oh, okay. yeah. absolutely, yeah. of course, and so, um. We now started make uh, artist material advisors twice a, uh, twice a month because thank you guys you call us uh, I mean it feels like we have now more uh, more uh, calls phone calls where we had before without AMA so um, thank you for watching our programs and uh, we promise you to continue to do this. Uh, the only small thing, we are ready to introduce new website next month, maybe like in first or second week of the month. And so, and all this six, seven months actually, what George was working on new website, it's finally ready to go and it will be obviously a couple of weeks of testing and uh, checking what, what is going wrong. So we will not have AMA because every AMA we, we have, it's a lot of work uh, behind the scene because George is preparing the videos and the information and all that. So my, my job is easy here, just, just be with you for an hour. But so it's why we skipping one uh, in uh, middle of July and we will have one on the end of the July. And so uh, we will announce to you again, I, I know we were talking about because we had this um, great um, uh, testing with white, uh, with all whites, one color with all whites. And so we will give, uh, we will talk about the brightness of the yellowness and the uh, transparency and all that uh, great stuff. Uh, or we will go back to varnish and again it's it's depend which one we kick um, uh, and uh, do the first one so that's uh, that's my announcement so then uh, don't miss us don't think something happened and we just will be finalizing our website um, we are going to Spain uh, with we definitely uh, doing this because we already bought the tickets I was um, prolonging that with all with all what's happening in the world but uh, we can't uh, wait because George was uh, of course was uh, hoping to do mines old mines for uh, last I mean we decided to go there in 2020 it didn't happen and now we're just pushing ourselves, and so if, if you have any interest in um, a certain area of the Spain, uh, we would be happy uh, to go there and um, investigate for you. Or if you have any suggestions, uh, if you already did something crazy in Spain, we would be happy to hear that too. Um, so here's a question. Is vermilion more opaque than cinnabar due to its density? Uh, they both identical. It's absolutely identical. So we, uh, I can tell you this. So uh, they both heavy, uh, both of them. What is that gravity eight? Yeah, is the that, so specific gravity, a, uh, both vermilion and cinnabar are 8. about 8.1, okay. which means that for the same volume of material, it is over eight times heavier than water. So yeah. you can imagine it's, it's, it's very it's, dense. They're both very opaque. So um, both very opaque. I, I mean, that jar of cinnabar, uh, you probably will use for so long because like when we were selling vermilion, 
uh, on portrait society, people would return like two, three years later and saying like, you know what, I still have it, but I will buy because on portrait society, we had the, the special deal. And uh, so it, it will be for a long time where the, of course, malachite and uh, lazurite are quite transparent. So um, that's, uh, and I don't know about orpiment. <laughs> it's, a, it's a peg, but I don't know how much you will use. And so this is such unusual color. And so that uh, uh, it would be interesting to, to know all our customers who, who uh, buy this, uh, this pigment. And if they will give us their feedback, that would be absolutely great for the future. Thank you. Oh, uh, I wanted to get uh, thank you, Winter Knits, for about uh, explanation Hello. about new pigments. Uh, John, yeah, this is an interesting uh, idea: or pigment and Venetian medium, because Venetian medium, of course, has uh, made wonderful um, glaze. Glass. Mm -hmm. Might might be a good idea. Thanks. And something um, is flying here. So, <laughs> um, so uh, Pam has another. Uh, you mentioned using orpiment in portraits. Could orpiment and cinnabar be used together to make a nice flesh tone? Absolutely, yes. absolutely. That's that's what we. Uh, uh, I started to talk about this. I didn't know how how much interest in that. Uh, what in uh, old manuscripts, and so they are saying that from eighth uh, century they started add uh, orpiment, just teeny tiny. Um, amount of the orpiment to the uh, yellow ochre and then mixing with cinnabar and uh, so apparently orpiment was giving that incredible glow to the the skin tone and uh, again i don't know if it's all you know myths because artists have a lot of myths and so but i hope that is the magic so Yes. Uh, Winternitz actually says I was late. Uh, what is the approximate cost of cut for cinnabar red? Okay, so uh, there are no approximation. There's a uh, hundred six dollars for that uh, for cinnabar, and um, if you will look back uh, this program, so I'm explaining. Then here is hundred grams um, of the uh, the pigment uh, without jar. So where because of the density of the pigment, because of the vermilion and cinnabar as the most uh, heaviest uh, pigments. And so for every hundred grams of pigment, we barely used five grams of oil. So that's how uh, dense it is. So then basically what you buy in the, in the uh, jar, it's the pigment. So if you will compare it to the pigment, how much we sell, so then you probably will spend around $360 on the pigment alone. So where the, uh, so um, uh, azurite, I believe it's $72. Lazurite, $80. Orpiment, $51. And malachite is the cheapest. So uh, I think it's 41 or 42, 42, so, right, 42 yeah. dollars. And, so. and, and by the way, um, unfortunately, these are only available on our U.S. website from our U.S. location at this and time. And we will we're not sorry. sell through stores or yeah. for reta from retailers. Yeah. And so we're sorry to all of our friends up in Canada and in Europe uh, who uh, where we, we can ship from our other websites there. But uh, unfortunately, that's. That's uh, just because of this limitation and so forth. So that's. I mean, again, that's what it is. And it you... is limited edition now, and if it will go well, we we will see how. I mean, for example, Orpiment we already sold without even announcement. We already sold. Uh, uh, I, I believe it's six jars so, sold like like this, and today by the apparently it was newsletter uh, went out around nine o'clock and we already have the orders and so remember every jar is um numbered so we know exactly how many will be left at some point so here's and, a, yeah uh, here's a question it's not totally related to uh can any of your extenders uh and i assume instead of saying take out uh uh, create more translucency of oil paint without adding too much of a chalky look. Um, the extenders, and 
like uh, we're, we're talking about uh, mediums like Velasquez medium and pasto medium. I'm There's sure. a uncle 60 love you. So then you always here. So I'm happy to, uh, uh, to have you here today. So just the question, the back question is, so the, the chalk and the bright, so do, do they give you the chalkiness or, or chalk, because... they could, if you use quite a bit. Again, it's just but, uh, but, uh, a refractive index. The chalk the, is the almost the same as the oil. So they're right. like, uh, chalkiness actually comes from, uh, from, uh, not only using white, but also uh, a color that is, let's say, for instance, titanium, which tends to be a cool white. And if you use it with a warm color, you get kind of a chalky look. So uh, the extender mediums like Velasquez medium and impasto medium, uh, they don't necessarily, they add transparency, but they don't necessarily give chalkiness. Apparently, you know, you, you should see how many uh, phone calls we have about extenders. Um, and uh, looks like that's why we repeat that, that uh, program again, because we do have a lot of people uh, interested in this. And so I, I do want to remind you, if you are interested in that, we have special uh, set where we have 16 of them. So we you can try without buying the, you know, bags of them. You can buy, it's just four, um, uh, four ounce uh, jars. And so that's the, actually the powders though. Yeah. yeah powders. Yeah, right. And so that's, uh, then you can just definitely, uh, try all each of them. And so then see what, Oh, I misunderstood. What? He, okay. uh, uncle 60 says, I want to take away translucency. Oh, so you want to make it more opaque. Okay. And that's of so course, then, that's not what, not Then you just use the color pigment, right, remember. Right. So if you want something to, uh, to change the property of the paint you bought from us, uh, but it's not enough. Uh, so then buy the pigment. We, we have exactly the same name on the pigment and just to, to make that more a peg. So instead of, of course, um, extenders, you use exactly the same pigment. That's that's how but extenders you... make paint more transparent. transparent. That's for that's, sure. So you don't that... want to use an extender. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, John asks about as a set. Uh, uh, I, I, I assume he's asking about um, as a three, f five of them. All five of them. We're not we're not making them as as sets. You can buy them. We already <laughs> have uh, orders and people already bought five. And so, and uh, I truly, this is, um, you know, it would not be fair to even my, <clears throat> my employees because we uh, imagine how many of us for two years were working and just to give any discount on that, I, um, it's not, we don't, we not don't, this we, time. We don't it have was them as good a set at this yes. time. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good um, lesson for us, so then we will know what to do and what to not do in the future. This is a good question from Winternitz. Uh, yeah. Since these are jars, do you keep them upside down to prevent separation in the paint? I don't, but again, just prevent, because... It won't prevent separation. Uh, separation, no. So no. It's actually you want to have separation uh, in this case. The reason why, because again, so then uh, the oil at least will be preventing the skinning. And so that's why we send you this, uh, this bottle of the oil, uh, because uh, that is good idea here. And if at any point, so you pull out the oil. And so if you, uh, you take the pigment as much as you want and you mix with, uh, with uh, any oil you need. So this is the, that's why we did this in jars. So then at least you can see and judge what's happening in, uh, um, during the time of use. Yeah. And the oil that separates, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. acts as acts to help prevent skinning. Yeah. yeah. That's the key thing. Yeah. It's a good thing in this case. And because we don't put additives, we do get separation. <clears throat> we yeah. don't want to put the additives because then that changes the paint. It doesn't behave like it did historically. That's, yeah. that's the key. That's what we do. That's, that's what we do it, you know. Oh, you pigment. should see my husband, how now she, he's saying like, that's what we do. <laughs> so, okay. I'm translating him now. <laughs> so, all right. um, I guess it's all uh, questions for today. And, um, so happy to see you today. And, um, 
see you on July 27th, I believe. Uh, it would be last Wednesday of the month. And yep. hopefully by that time, we already will have a new website. And uh, maybe that AMA will be about how to navigate in our website. It will be absolutely new navigation. We are excited here. We're happy to uh, to this uh, nightmare will finish what uh, seven months took for George. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, see you next time. Thank you being with us and stay well.